Hey gang, so I'm down here in my video editing area, my basement dungeon, and today we're going to talk about this little device that I've been using over the last, well, half of the 2023 writing season, and that is the Insta360 X3 camera. So right from the start, let me be completely up front with you. I bought this thing myself. Nobody gave it to me. Nobody asked me to review it. I decided to go out and get this camera again because I thought it looked like something cool. So I went out and I spent, well, $500 for the camera and the motorcycle bundle. That is the motorcycle mounting bundle. Right, and you can look online and that's about the price that they're going for right now. Again, with tax and everything, I paid now about $540 for this. Now, as with most electronic devices, well, that's not where you're going to stop spending money. Right? Of course, if you're going to travel like me, that one battery that the camera comes with, well, it isn't going to hack it. So you're going to need a couple of extra batteries and the three battery charger. Well, the charger itself runs about $50 and the batteries are $25 each. So you're looking at another hundred bucks again for those extra batteries and charger. And of course, because this camera has these dual lenses and you want to keep them protected, well, you're going to end up buying some things like this. This is the lens protector that runs about $30 a piece. I ended up buying three of these right, just in case they get scratched while I'm out there riding. So when all was said and done, I ended up putting out about $700 for the camera and all of the equipment I need to get out there and do some filming. So the reason I was willing to fork out that $700 is because I'm always looking for ways to simplify my video kit while I'm out there riding. Because for me, Again, making videos isn't the primary thing that I'm doing. I'm out there riding, I'm traveling, I'm having a great time on my bike, and I just so happen that I'm going to do some video editing to share with everybody. But if that's taking away from my trip, well, then it's not worth it to me. So I always want to keep things as simple as possible. Now in the past to do that, what I've done is I've taken one of these GoPro cameras here and I've mounted it to a little device that allows me to spin that camera around 360 degrees like so. And that way I can shoot in front of the bike, I can turn it back and shoot looking at me or I can turn it off to the side so I can get a wide variety of shots again just using one camera. Now, of course, another way to do that would be to have more than one camera, right? And you've seen many other YouTubers out there who have one of these cameras attached to their helmet and then another one attached to the bike. So they're shooting two cameras at once, right? Well, that's cool, but then you have twice the footage that you have to go through when you get home. Makes for a lot of work and you got to try to sync up the cameras and all this kind of stuff. And again, I just don't like to work that hard. So that's where the Insta360 comes in. I thought, well, what if I can replace having to carry two or three GoPro cameras with me and just use one camera instead? Right, so this allows me to literally shoot, as the name implies, in a 360 degree circle. I can shoot backwards at myself and also forward on the bike down on the bike and off to the side, again, all at the same time. However, there is a downside. This Insta360 camera, along with just about every other 360 camera out there, does not shoot the same kind of quality images that you're gonna find, right, from a standard GoPro or any other, you know, fixed view camera. So the Insta360 is capable of shooting 5.7K video. However, that's for the entire 360 degree circle or sphere, right, that this camera is shooting. So when you go to reframe your video, right, then you're getting sections of that entire 5.7K, right? So your actual resolution is gonna be much smaller. 
Now, as far as getting the best footage out of your Insta360 X3 camera, well, you're gonna wanna set it to 5.7K, 30 frames per second. You wanna set your bit rate to high and your image sharpness to low. Now, also, I think for most of us who are doing motorcycle videos, just setting the color correction to auto as well as the white balance to auto in the camera is the easy way to go, right? You can always change that if necessary in your video editing program. So let's talk about shooting style with these two different cameras. For me, when I use the GoPro camera, I am typically shooting in really short bursts, like maybe 20, 30 seconds, I mean, maybe up to two or three minutes at a time. I very rarely let the camera go for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes at one time. Again, that's a lot of video to go through for that just one shot, right? But also, the longer you let these cameras run, the more likely they are to overheat. So the best course, at least as far as I'm concerned, is to shoot with your GoPros in, again, short bursts. On the other hand, the X3 here has been really good at shooting for longer durations, right? I've been able to let this run for, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time, you know, shooting, for example, going up Mount Washington or some other really great roads that I was riding. I could just let the camera run, and then I've got, again, four or five views if I want to use them when I'm done with that great ride and I've had no problem with it overheating or freezing up. Now here's another caveat. You are adding some extra steps in your video editing process, at least it is for me. Normally I could take and shoot those short bursts with my GoPro camera, and then I just come back and I really easily edit them and you know into a timeline, and I can create a video of me riding down the road. Well now, before I get to that step, I first have to go in and take a look at that 360 video that I shot, and I have to reframe it into what I want to use for my end video, right? So that's an extra step that I have to go through. Now, I know that with Apple products, it seems to work pretty well that you can use like Adobe Premiere Pro, and bring that 360 video into Premiere, right, using a plugin, a couple of plugins actually, one from GoPro and one from Insta360, right? But for me, I find that it doesn't work well as a Windows user. So when I first got the camera, I was using Adobe Premiere 2023 because I keep my subscription up and I keep the software up to date. Well, when I added in the plugin for Insta360, it just completely crashed my Adobe. It just it wouldn't start at all. It just kept crashing. So I had to remove the plugin. Right, and then I got on the line with Insta360 and I said, hey, what's the deal? Well, they ended up telling me that their plugin was only compatible up to 2015. And I'm like, seriously? I have to roll all the way back several years? Right? You're crazy, right? So I, of course, didn't do that. Now I guess they have upgraded their plugin since then, but now I'm a little hesitant to try their new plugin, right, because of the experience that I had. So what I ended up doing is I have an extra step that I go through. I use the Insta360 desktop application. I then reframe all of my 360 video into the shots that I want. I save those and then I import them into Adobe Premiere Pro or then I assemble my final video. Again, it is an extra step. It's a little bit more work, but for me it's worth it because I don't want to crash Adobe again. Now, while we're talking about this, let me say that I wasn't too impressed with the customer support from Insta. All right, when I got online to question them about crashing my Adobe Premiere Pro, right, they initially wanted to blame me and that I didn't have enough horsepower right, to process the video, and that's just not true. Man, this machine is souped up. I got it exactly for video editing. There's not a problem with the machine and the configuration. 
So after we got through that, right, then we started getting into the versions of Adobe and that I had to roll back. And I'm like, no, that's just insane. Why aren't you keeping up with the latest version of these products, right? That's what your job is supposed to be. So while the camera seems to work pretty well, again, I'm not that impressed with the customer support from Insta. So let's talk about mounting the camera here for a minute. So this is typically how I would mount my GoPro camera on my bike. I have a ram ball attached to my handlebars. I then have an extension arm and that little device that I was talking about earlier that allows me to rotate the camera around 360 degrees to get various shots. With the Insta360, I'm doing essentially the same thing. I have it mounted to my handlebars with that invisible pole, right? This pole, because it's at the center point of the two halves of your 360 sphere, right? This is gonna be edited out when they stitch those two hemispheres together in the software. So now with this camera, I am pointed back at me, I'm pointed out front, I'm pointed out to the sides, all at the same time. Now you can also do some cool things with this camera, like extending this arm out, right, so that you can get that impression that the camera is out in front of you, shooting back at you. But you have to be careful, because if you get this camera out too far, well, then it gets a little bit wobbly, right, and it can actually fall. So I noticed that they have a new motorcycle mounting kit out, that uh, wasn't available when I bought the camera, and it supposedly improves on some of that stuff. And of course, you don't have to be limited to just mounting this camera on your handlebars. Right? It's easy for me, because then I can turn it on and off without you know, having to worry about getting a remote or anything, but you could mount this down low. I have done that, or you can mount it so it's off of the back of your bike and again, get all kinds of different shots. All right, let's take a quick look at Insta360 Studio. So what you see here is the studio, and it's pretty simple. Right, you've got the videos that you've opened you know, over on your left-hand side here, and then the one that you're working on is, of course, in the main screen. Now, before you get going, let me show you a couple of things that you should make sure you have set. If you come up here and you go into this little camera icon, you'll see flow state, stabilization, and direction lock. Click those, because that's gonna make sure that uh, your camera isn't gonna float around on you, right? Whatever you point the camera as we're going through reframing, that is gonna make sure that it stays that way. I also over here, you do have different things that you can set as far as uh, your stitching, for example, right? If you're using the lens guards, well, then you would want to check that. Uh, and again, you can also change different things down here to determine how this is going to, uh, to stitch these two sides of your sphere together, your, your 360 sphere. To edit your video, right, what you're going to do basically is uh, what they call reframing. So you're going to move your video around to frame it as you wish, all right? So you can just move this thing all around and point it backwards, point it off to the side, all right? Or point it forward. All right, now the way that I've been using this is I will, for example, take a, a forward view here. So we'll start with that. And what I will do is come in and set a keyframe. Right, and a keyframe is basically just a marker that says, okay, this is the effects that I want to use at this point. So at the beginning of my video, I'll set a keyframe and we'll get the video framed where I want it to be. And then I can come in here and I can use these different little video effects or views that they have uh, available. The default is kind of this fisheye view. Right? What you see here, it kind of distorts everything right, on the outside. You can do what they call a crystal ball effect like this in tiny planet view. Right? You can do a narrow natural view. Right? You can do an ultra wide view. 
a wide, to call linear, plus, or linear, or narrow. All right, so you can play around with which one of those that you like the best. For me, I find that either wide right, or linear is going to give me the most natural looking image. Right? If I use one of these other things like the fisheye, if you if we go through here, again, you notice everything gets distorted. Right, It has that fisheye look to it. So that's not really what I want. All right? What I want is I want more natural look. So I can come here to wide, and then I can run that through, and I'm going to get, a, again, a more natural feel to the video. Again, for my purposes, that is what I want. So what I'll do is basically run through the entire video like this, or at least how much I want to use, right? and I can set my in and out points. Let's say that I want to do about a minute of video here. So I can come here and I can set my out point. Right? And then along the way, right, maybe about halfway through, I'm going to put another keyframe. And again, I'm going to use the same settings that I was before. And what this is going to do is just assure that the video remains constant for me all the way through. I'm going to the end, and I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so now what I end up having now, if I come to here, is we just have a nice little video that's all pointed forward. All right, and again, it's simple. Nothing fancy, right? Here, this is going to be my forward view, right, from the motorcycle. So now once I've got that little section of video set like I want it, I can export it, right? And I have some presets made up here. This is a 4K preset that I typically use, and that is going to have a resolution of 3840 by 2160, and I use a bit rate of 100. And why do I typically use bitrate of 100? Well, because if I look at the properties of this video that we're editing, notice that the bitrate that it was shot at is 118 megabytes per second. All right, so I think the maximum that you can get out of the Insta360 X3 is 120 megabytes per second. So it doesn't make any sense to set your bitrate any higher than that. Uh, plus, if you're going to be uploading to something like YouTube, then they're going to compress your file down anyway, and you're going to get a bit rate of something or probably around 30, something like that. So, so compiling at more than 100 doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Once I've got this set and I want to export it, I can either start the export immediately, which we won't do here, or I can add it to queue. All right, so I'm just going to add this to the queue, and then it's going to be sitting there and waiting right, for me. Now, I will give you one caveat here. If you're going to be doing the kind of things that I like to do where you're going to be reframing this video into several different views, you need to make sure that you compile this one before you start to reframe it again. Otherwise, it's just going to get changed, right? So... And compile this video first before you make any changes to it. All right, so once I've got that compiled, then I can come back in here and I can take this same section of video and I can change it. All right, I'm going to use these same settings, but now I can say, you know what, I want to look back on me. So now I can shoot this whole video. All right, I can edit this. Again, I can come here and edit it again to here. And then again, do the same thing with the end. Where do I want this to end up? Something like around there. All right, and now I can recompile this one. Again, I'll do the same thing. I'll pull this up. I will name it something appropriate. Like Typically, I might say, you know, 001 back or something like that versus 001 forward. Just something to distinguish what the two pieces of video are. But now I can compile it, you know, again in that view. Once I've done that, well, I can go back and I can take that same section of video and I can do something different. I can do it like this from the top. 
All right, and again, I can make this whole video looking down at the tank from the top. Okay, and then as I come in here, then I can and just watch the video through. Yes. Now, when I get into editing in Premiere Pro, I may not use all of this video. I'm going to maybe just use a few seconds of this, but I've got now a minute of video that I can use again when I'm compiling my finished product. All right, so that's basically the process that I go through. You can see that it does add a little bit of time to have to go through your 360 videos and, and figure out what it is that you want to use right, for your final video. But in the end, after going through this, again, you can get some pretty cool shots this way. Again, using one single mount point for your camera. Now you might have seen in some of the advertisements for the Insta360 camera, all of the cool things that you can do with backgrounds and you know all of these cool effects that you have available. And that is true, but all that stuff is available only on their phone app, right? So for me, that is good stuff if you're doing like TikTok kind of videos, short format, you know, kind of things. But for somebody like me who's doing more longer form videos, well, all of that stuff really doesn't help me very much. I would much rather edit on my computer, right? And again, I stay away from all that kind of cutesy stuff. So bottom line here is, is this camera worth spending, well, $700, right, to be able to do this? I mean, at this point, I've been really having fun with it. I've been enjoying it. I think I've been able to create some cool little videos with it. Now, could I do the same thing or have I been doing the same thing essentially with my single GoPro camera? Yeah, right. Um, you know, it's a little more work out there on the road to get it done with a GoPro camera, but it's less work when I come back and sit down to edit. On the other hand, this Insta360 is much less work on the road, right? Because I'm just using one camera and getting all of these shots. But when I come back, well, then it takes more time to edit the video. So it's just a trade-off. Uh, as far as quality goes, as I said, you're going to get much better quality if you use right, a GoPro or even the new Insta360, you know, single view action camera, right? You're always going to get better footage that way. But is it so bad right, with this 360 video that it's not worth doing? Well, no. I think it's pretty decent footage, right? Uh, and you can make some corrections and things if you really want to dive into that, you know, getting into your editing program. And that will depend upon what you're using for an editing program. So at this point, I am enjoying this camera. I'm glad I bought it. Uh, I'll let you know, I guess, in the future whether that continues to be the case. But for right now, yeah, it was worth having. It's fun to play around with. Uh, and I'm looking forward to using it on this big trip that I have coming up. All right, guys. So ride safe and keep squeezing your lemon.